Hey folks, it's Ian from Gemba Red, and today we're going to be testing this VBR Red Near Infrared Light Intensity Sensor. So this is a light intensity sensor that promises to measure the intensity, the milliwatts per centimeter squared, of red light therapy devices fairly accurately. And it's really cheap. You can find it on Amazon. It's currently about $68 on Amazon, so that's cheaper than a lot of solar power meters. And I'll give you the quick verdict is that it is good at measuring 630, 660, and 850. It's not so good at measuring 810. It seems to measure it falsely low. We're going to be comparing it to the Hopo color meter. So the way it works, you just have one button to press on and it turns on. There's nothing else, it's just powered by some triple A's. So very simple, very basic. And then you need to pair it with an app on your phone. So you get this V-Sensor app that you can download from the store and boot that up. It should scan for your device or you can press scan down here to make sure it finds it. And then it just pairs with that device. And then there's a couple different modes. The only one I'm testing out is the top mode, the 660 and 850. It just gives you real time measurements of those wavelengths. And again, there is a range. So even though it does say 660 and 850, you know, there's a plus or minus on those ranges. Um, like I said, it does well with 630 as well. And, uh, you know, maybe plus or minus, you know, on the 850, maybe there's a plus or minus that's reasonable. So let's just test this out against a couple different devices that have different wavelengths, different ratios of wavelengths, uh, just to see how well it performs compared to the Hopo Color Spectra Radiometer. And I've just got this little phone stand that I'll be putting the sensor on so that way I can be hands-free. And so now it's measuring in real time. It's sending the signal from the sensor to your phone in real time. So we're getting a total intensity of about 38 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And we can see how it divides that up. So you can see the red range. You know, we know it's a 660 because it's just the Viver panel. So we've already checked that. We know it's 660. Um, but we know the red is about 25 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And the near infrared is about 13 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So that's helping confirm the wavelength ratio that we confirmed in our original review. And we can see that discrepancy right away in real time. So it's a really neat feature. Um, we can confirm that there's a higher proportion of red to near infrared in the Viver panel. So even though they have an equivalent number of LEDs of red to near infrared, for some reason the outputs are different. The red is more efficient. It's putting out more intensity compared to the near infrared. So I just took a measurement with the Hopo Color Spectrometer and I positioned the sensor in the same position that the sensor is currently now. So we can compare the two. This one kind of takes a, a grab of the data so it's kind of static and then this one's still measuring in real time. But we can see the Hopo Color gets 35 milliwatts per centimeter squared and the Weber sensor gets 36.5 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So pretty close. So now we have the Viver panel in near infrared only. So it's completely invisible. It's just the sending the 850 wavelength. And we can see the Hopo color gets 11.6 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And the Viber sensor gets 11.2 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So again, very good matchup. And now we're in the red only mode for the uh, Viver panel and we get 26 milliwatts per centimeter squared from the 660, and we get 25.8 milliwatts per centimeter squared from the VBR sensor. So again, great matchup if you're measuring the standard wavelengths, 660, 850. Okay, so now I have this custom UFO light that has all 810 nanometers wavelengths, so we're just gonna check the 810 accuracy. So now, as I said, the 810 has the biggest discrepancy. It's very dramatic. The Hopo color is getting about 29 milliwatts per centimeter squared, and the VBR sensor is only getting 15.8. So, you know, about half as much, you know, you could consider some sort of correction factor if you do end up using this. Uh, but again, if usually 810s are incorporated with multiple wavelength devices, and then you have to split up all the ratios. And so, you know, might not be good if you have a device that has a lot of 810 or a significant portion, um, it's not going to be so good. Okay, so now I have another UFO light, except this one is all 630 nanometers, so we can just check how accurate it is with the 630 wavelength. Okay, just adjusted the contrast so you can see. We get 34 milliwatts per centimeter squared with the 633 nanometer wavelength, 
and on the VBR sensor, we're getting 34 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So uh, matches up very well, actually, surprisingly well. So 630 is good, 660, 850. So those are the three wavelengths uh, we can verify are very good with uh, this new VBR sensor. So now we're going to test it against a multiple wavelength panel. This is the Shenzhen Idea Light RL Pro 300. And we get 40 milliwatts per centimeter squared on the Hopo color. And again, that's representing, you know, all these different spectrums, the 630, 660, 670, 810, 830, 850, and some of the, uh, you know, whatever their near infrared is. I think it's around 1040 or 1050. It's not actually what they claim it to be. Uh, but again, and you know now you get the VBR sensor, which is also around 40. Um, so again, it might be off by about 0.7 or 0.8. Uh, but again, a very good uh, matchup with you know these two sensors and getting the intensity right. I thought things would get thrown off with a multiple spectrum panel. And maybe it's just how this spectrum, this particular spectrum, works well with this panel. So you have to check different spectrums and different ratios. It might just be luck that it's working well for the RL Pro and not necessarily for other ratios of wavelengths. And just to confirm, because this is a really neat feature, you can see it here displayed, there's much less red intensity to near-infrared intensity. So again, there might be some error in this, but it's very clear. We've got almost 30 milliwatts per centimeter squared of near-infrared compared to 11 milliwatts per centimeter squared of red. And so that's it for the review of the VBR red near infrared uh, light intensity sensor. I think it's very good, it's very promising. Again, the technology doesn't need to be expensive, it doesn't need to be fancy, it just needs to be validated that it's accurate. So anyway, thanks for tuning in.